We're still using all of our modalities for respiratory support. So that includes everything from nasal cannula oxygen all the way up to mechanical ventilation and ECMO or extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. So the full gamut of respiratory support, much like we would see in other forms of viral pneumonia, complicated by the infectious possibilities associated with aerosol generating procedures. These patients are sedated to the degree that is required for them to tolerate mechanical ventilation. One of the concerns with lung injury is that the body is going to attempt to maintain appropriate uh, oxygenation and ventilation. So a patient will breathe quite hard and hard and that can be actually injurious to the lungs. So we attempt to provide mechanical ventilatory assistance when needed, place a breathing tube, and then sedate the patient again to the degree that they are required to tolerate mechanical ventilation. Sometimes we actually have to pharmacologically paralyze patients mm -hmm. such that they don't behave in a manner taking very large breaths that we know cause damage to the lungs. So this is all accompanied with, again, the appropriate level of sedation and the staff that provide care to these patients are all well trained in this assessment and management of these patients. Degree of respiratory illness is a bit longer in terms of mechanical ventilation than we typically uh, often associated with the pneumonia. So these patients are intubated for days, more than a week at times. And at the, as they begin to resolve their illness, they begin to breathe on their own, and we allow that. And when they're breathing sufficiently on their own and they have adequate oxygenation, the breathing tube comes out.